Saboteur with Matt Side. I got Colin Palmer here at the Mark Zimmer uh, Memorial Tournament. Uh, Coach, who you got in the finals tonight? We got about six guys in the finals, six or seven guys in the finals, so should be good. We got a lot of good competition matched up, so we'll see how it goes. Well, we're here to uh, honor Mark Zimmer, the first four-time First four-time state champion in Ohio, and uh, I believe you were a state champion too, sir. What's up with that? I mean, that's just how it goes. You're a tough guy. That just happens. Now, how's your team going to look uh, coming down to the state tournament this year? You're going to be very competitive? They'll be good, man. We're just trying to get healthy. We had a couple uh, injuries throughout December, so trying to map all that out and get everybody back on track, and they'll be fine. They'll okay. be ready. Hey, how many teams are in this tournament today, sir? Uh, we usually shoot for 10, but I believe with the shift of shift of weekends going from the first weekend of the season to first weekend of January, we... I think we're down to nine. So, and most of this has been a pool tournament. Is that correct? Yep. We go pool tournament, and then we uh, bracket after that. So, and, uh, could you talk about how many teams are in this tournament? Yeah, we got about nine teams. Um, we lost lost a little bit. Um, we have to had to shift the weekends from the first weekend of the season to first weekend in January. So, um, it was tough pulling the teams together. But we got some good competition. We got CVCA here this year. We got um, LaSalle and. We'll keep building it up and, you know. Now, is that part of the Top uh, Top Gun or the Ironman tournament was changed? Yes. Yeah, they took off that first weekend of the season. So week one was Ironman for us. Okay, so the memorial is for Mark Zimmer, who passed away three years ago, Lou Gehrig's disease. Has he got some fundraiser or some kind of thing that he gives back to the cells? His wife's here in the crowd, I know. Yep, yep. Brenda and Lauren are here. Um, yeah, they do all kinds of different scholarships, and then they, we also have our Mark Zimmer Fund that helps fund our wrestling program. So we have a, they got a few things set up for them. So. Well, that's wonderful. We should see a nice finals in tonight, Coach. Should good be really luck. Good. Thank you. Hey, I'm here with Matt Side, Phil the Sabato, and we're uh, filming the finals of the Mark Zimmer Memorial here at DeSales High School. This is the third year Mark died of the Lou Gehrig's disease, and they have a fund set up to help fund the DeSales wrestling program. So we'll see you in about two seconds. The 106 is to be starting. And it's going to be D Clan Hutt against Caleb Jones, CVC, and Hutt is from Lazelle. D Clan, ninth grader from Lazelle, his record is 13 and 8. And Caleb Jones, CVC. His record is I'm not sure on that. I don't have the record in front of me. Both kids are trying to get their inside control. They're staying in the circle, but let's see what they do. Takes a shot far out, this LaSalle. I already said that. No. And by the way, Declan was the number one seed in this tournament from LaSalle in the red, but he's sprawling back. He gets shot on by Caleb Jones of CVC. Caleb's trying to pull that single in, but, but he's not finishing. He's got his head on the mat. He's got to come up through. Now he's going to go around and try to get right. Declan Hutt. He's on top, but he just got the two in the red. He's ranked 18th in the state, and he's got the two, and he's riding with the claw. Now he changes off to arm bar now he's trying to keep cradle or tilt he's trying to bump it forward 
He's going to butcher him. He's trying to butcher him. He's going to turn for one. Count Nelly went way too fast on that, folks. Way too fast. So now he's trying to cradle. He's walking the head to the knee. Now he's going to settle, and we got counts. They've got counts. we got the ref counting. Oh, he's trying to stretch him out. Oh, yes. The cell. Got the three count. He's trying to get the pin. Oh, he got the fall just before the end of the first period. How much time is left? D Clan Hutt gets a fall. First period. And we're getting ready for the uh, next match. Is the 113. We got Elijah Mohana, 10th grader from LaSalle, against Griffin Gardner, Olin Tangy, 9th grader, Liberty. Olin Tangy, Liberty is 12 and 4. And LaSalle, 9 and 8, and he was 8th in Brexville from LaSalle. LaSalle's going to be in the red and black uniform and Liberty's in all blue and he'll be in the green anklet. And they start off both hands on the mat. They're trying to circle. LaSalle's got the head down. He's trying to get the headlock. Trying to snatch me to the ground to try to get a quick headlock. Also, Elijah Mahana is rated 11th in the state of Ohio. And uh, Griffin Gardner has no rating in his. But Gardner's trying to underhook. Now he's got the overhook, and he's pushing to try to keep him out of bounds. Both wrestlers to the center of the mat. Underhook by LaSalle. He's trying to drag that. He's trying to drag that. Liberty, as he should get the ankle. Oh, he went for the leg. Oh, he doesn't have the finish, though. He's got the whizzer in. Oh, LaSalle fight. Elijah gets out with the whizzer. No, no points so far. The referee Fred, Fred Feeney just inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame this past fall. Is officiating ref. And there we got a Merkel for two. See if he can stretch him out. Oh, he's running a half now. Still has the arm bar in. Oh, he's trying to roll him. Nope. Wow. That's it in the first period. Let's see who gets the flip. Elijah Mohana, LaSalle takes down. He gets the wins of calls. Griffin Gardner, the ninth grader from Olin Tangy Liberty, have choice in the third period. Gardner's got the boots in. He's gonna try to arm bar him. Oh, he needs to throw that half in, but he can't get it in. Now he's gonna try to get the head. Oh, he's gonna pry it down. He keeps that leg lock. Oh! The cell's trying to roll through. He's still down. He's gotta push through so he can get the double. He doesn't have the reversal yet. It's still Gardner in position. Gardner's fighting that position, but Elijah's going to get the two, maybe back points. Now it's two, and now he's counting. Now he's counting back points. He's got him. Oh, and it's a fall in the early part of the second period. Elijah Moore, Mohana, 10th grader from LaSalle, wins by fall. Come. 
Okay, okay. Okay. All right, next we got the 120 pounders. We got Rocco Kuznicki, CVC, against Colton Russell from Olin Tangy. They're both 10th graders. Rocco's rated 8th in the country, and Colton Russell from Olin Tangy Liberty is rated 15th in the state. Both wrestlers are 10th graders. Their, their winning percentage is uh, six and five for CVC's record and eight and five for Liberty. They're just filling out each other by grabbing each other's hands and head button, but not really trying to go for a takedown. He's got a little key lock in there, a little Russian. Does all the tangy Liberty, but he didn't take it. Rocco's in the white, and Colton Russell from Olin Tangy Liberty's in the blue and white. Liberty's in the red anklet, and Rocco's in the green anklet, and there's still no score in the first period as he's pushing him, trying to push into him and get a foot sweep, maybe. Bob, he goes to that low single. He's got to come up, though. He's got to come up. Oh, Rocco's put him over. See if he can get the two. He's got the two. No back points though. He lets the arm slide through. Rocco's trying to take that bar and bar it up. Last year, Rocco was second in the district and uh, Colton was third at 106. Time. Should be two to nothing, is that correct? Thank you. End of the first period, it's two to nothing. It's hard for me to see, I'm at the... Okay, Rocco takes down. And Colton Russell's trying to ride him with the double underhook. He's on his hip though, he's got to come up, he's got to come up and push forward. Rocco's on the base, he's coming up, he needs to get hand control and back pressure. He needs to cut through, cut through. He's still standing up, they're counting. Well, they got a warning for Red for stalling, he needs to have the mat take to the mat. Uh-oh, now Rocco's trying to get a reversal. Rocco's getting it. Nope, he takes the one, and they're neutral. Three to, three to nothing, Rocco. Midway through the second, still 3-0. Oh, he tried to, I don't know, look out like an arm drag, but he's way too far out to get that. Now he's getting underhook, but he needs to get his head to that side of the underhook to get leverage. It's kind of hard to get it on the far side. Now he's on a double underhook. Both wrestlers are going out of bounds to see what he calls. Now they're both coming to the center point. Rocco tried to drag by, but no avail. Now he's trying to get under hooks. Both wrestlers are pushing and pushing. Close to the end of the second period, Rocco's got to fight that Russian. No takedown yet. Time, end of the second period. Still three to zero. Colton Russell from Olin Tangy Liberty in the blue singlet takes down. Start the third period. He's trying to turn him, but there's 
they're straight up. There's no back points yet. He needs to get a bigger tail. He needs to lift with his legs. Nothing yet. Still made as there's no chance of turning or no chance of getting out. So now they're starting to restart. Rocco goes right back in the sit position with under hooks. Trying to turn him, he's trying to get a cheap tilt. But it's kind of hard when his right leg is over the top. He needs to use that right leg to lift him up and pry to get him to elevate. What it does is puts Rocco on his hips and they call stalemate again. Now I think the third time you should be calling stalling after you do the same movement and no chance of getting anything out of there. Uh-oh. Trying to, Colton's trying to scoot. He needs to keep standing up. Uh-oh, he's trying to get a hand control. He's trying one-on-one -on -one instead of two-on-one. Uh-oh. No turn, no, no turning points. They go out of bounds. No, no back points. Good call, ref. Rocco kind of likes to go into that crab ride, but he needs to start moving his hips so he doesn't get. Oh, he's pulling him up top, but he's trying to get that arm through. See if he can get the arm through to get back points. He needs to get that half in there. Rocco's still trying to ride him, but he's not really fighting the turn, but just coming to the end of the period, it looks like we're going to have another 10th grader wins this tournament, the Mark Zimmer Memorial Tournament. Rocco Kozneka, 10th grader, wins three to nothing. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Ohio. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Next we have at 126, Aiden Allen from LaSalle. He'll be in the red outfit. And Huggy Williams, a 10th grader from Olin Tangy Liberty. This should be a good match. They're both good wrestlers. Huggy Williams is 11 and four. And he was fourth in this uh, state at 106. And then you have uh, State was third in the state. Aiden Allen last year at 120. No, they went out of bounds and no takedown. Aiden Allen is a 12th grader. And then the red single and red and Huggy Williams is a 10th grader. And he's in the black with the stars and stripes on the back. He'll be have the green anklet. Oh, nice low ankle pick. Whoa, that's two. Wow, that was cat-like on that one. Aiden Allen, and he kicks him loose. Two to one. got the inside control, but he's got to watch that Aiden likes to arm drag from there and go to a low single. Aiden's keeping a low 
base and he's just kind of trying to head control and try to figure out how to get in on Huggy. He's got a lower base, Huggy does. Now Aiden goes cat-like and gets the leg, comes up to underhook and release and they're both going to neutral. Getting into the uh, first period. Time. Huggy Williams' choice. He takes down right away, so we got Aiden Allen's going to have choice third period. Score is two to one with Red on top. He's winning by one point. Take down the river, or escape. Oh, Aiden trying to cradle, but he. Huggy was right out, Williams. Both wrestlers on their knees and hands, trying to get that quick shot. Uh-oh, double underhook. Huggy better get out of there and get his hands in. Have a top four place finishers at 106 to the head table. Top four place oh, finishers. Oh, Huggy's trying to. Oh, he gets a high crotch. He's got to cut the corner. Oh, oh, nothing yet. He had a nice high crotch. He's got to fight the wizard, Aiden. Oh, and they go out of bounds. Whoa, that could have been fleeing. I have to re look at that one. He didn't really try to turn in. He was bolting towards out of bounds on that last session there. We'll check that out on the replay. Both wrestlers are neutral position and they're trying to just figure out each other. Aiden goes to shot. He drags it by but he doesn't get it. Now he's going to try headlock but Huggy sucks into a single but he's got to come up. He's got to walk it up. Can't finish there with your head on the mat, Huggy. Got to get your head to the outside and sit through. Whoop, stalemate. Both wrestlers, uh-oh. Aiden tried to step in, but uh, Huggy had the inside control. He's got his head down, but he has the leg. He's got to try to come up with his feet, get his knees underneath him, knees slide up. Getting close to the end of the second period, and they call stalemate. Red's choice, Red takes down. Score is still two to two at the end of the second period. Aiden Allen takes down, probably gonna pop right up. Huggy's gonna try to throw the boots in, but nope, Allen's already to his feet and he gets kicked. It's a one point match, so whoever gets the takedown is gonna win unless they get another one. Wrestlers, please make sure you're at See what happens here. Your weight's coming up, we're going right through. Three to two right now. Aiden's winning in the red singlet. Wrestling uh, Huggy Williams in the black and the striped and the stars on the back. Aiden's trying to drag him. He's trying to drag him. He's not behind him yet. No points. Okay, we have the 113 pounders at the head table. 113 pounders at the head table. Uh, and third, Tyler Dusko. Second, Griffin Gardner, champion. Elijah. Oh, he gets a nice high crotch. He's got to finish with that arm around the waist. He's got to come around the waist. Woo! Whoa. Oh, we're talking right now. That looked like that might have been two. Oh, he calls neutral. No two. We'll have to check that out again, but I don't think it was two anyway. Here we go. They're back neutral. I know that Huggy needs to finish a little different. Now he gets shot in on a double deep in there. There, warning red going out of bounds. Warning red, first warning. Any 
have the top four place finishers at 120 pounds at the table. We have Aiden Joe from Hamilton Township, Nick Vivian from LaSalle, Cole Russell on Tension Liberty, and the champion Rocco Zanacki from Series CA to the table. Oh, nice ankle pick. Wow. He's in there deep. Oh, Huggy's trying to get that leg stretched out. He's trying to get his leg back. Wow, that's hard news. Still me. Ten seconds to go. No! Huggy Williams gets beat three to two. Three to two, Huggy Williams. When you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Ohio, who do you meet? Answer, men and women who play high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question, so where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer, high school sports. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Gets beat by a senior, Aiden Allen from LaSalle. Next in the finals at 132, Aiden King Hartley. He'll be in the blue and white stripe with the red headgear. And Ron Finks from CVCA, he's in the white with the blue, and he'll have the green anklet. This weight class, they weren't seated. Uh, they had uh, one of the boys from the cells, Jackson and Sabato, and Sabatine, Sebastian Vega from the cell was on the uh, seed for that. So these two boys weren't even seated. And they're in the finals of the Mark Zimmer Memorial Tournament. Harley Key's got the, oh, he almost had that leg. Tried to collar tie to a leg drop. Now they're both on the mat with their hands. King's trying to get his leg back. King gets a double leg. Oh, he goes right through him, folks, for two. And he cuts him right away, so it's two to one. Aiden King over Ron Finks. King is putting the pressure on him. He tries to drag. He gets around for two. He balls up the arm. No finish. He's trying to get the legs in, see if he can boot him up. Trying to stretch him out. He's got the boot in. Trying to work some head pressure. There, he pulls at the tricep. Needs to have that elbow more on the neck and going across that tricep. There he goes, now he's getting it on the neck. There's points, 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 getting back points. Two Aiden King. Aiden King's winning 6-0 with 26 seconds to go. And he's got him flat. Oh, and he gets a fall with 23 seconds to go in the first period. Aiden King, Bishop Hartley wins by fall. Next. 138, Holden Hahn, LaSalle. And then, Dylan Hart, CVC, 11th grader. LaSalle's gonna be in the black uniform with the red, and then CVC's in the blue and white uniform, and he'd be in the green anklet. 
Holden Hans, the 11th grader, he was seventh at the state in 132, first at 132 in the districts last year. His record is 12 and two. Two red. Oh, he tries to chin him back, but he lets him out. Two to one. Oh, he shoots in a high crotch, but then fights it off and gets the two. They need to get closer. They need to get closer to the out of bounds. Where's your partner? Ah, uh, he's not here. Gill and Hart. I don't have a stat on him as far as his record last year. Oh, he's going to cut him right towards the end of the first period. Oh, wow. He has to wait till he comes apart. 8 4. They're both in the neutral position. He's going to try to throw him. Oh, but he got the boots in so quick. It should be 10-4. 38 seconds to go in the third period. He's going to kick him again. But they got to come to his feet before he gives a one. Oh, now he clears him. Wow. Dylan Hart's got to pick up the pace here. He's got taken down three or four times already. He's got to try to get taken. Oh, he gets in deep on that. He's got to finish, though. Watch if he doesn't get the trail on him. He's going to try to split him. Uh oh! Top four place finishers at 126. The table top four Wow, he gave him the two. He's going to pin him backward. Whoa! He's getting back points, but no three back points. Time. 15 to five after the second period. He takes neutral, LaSalle takes neutral. Whoop, caution ready, tried a quick shot. Tried to jump off the gun. He gets in there deep again, but see what happens. The cell wants to throw him, and they got him going to his back. Two takedown. Holden Hahn is going to push him out. No, he keeps him in, and he spins again. Two red. Holden Hahn over Dylan Hart. Score is 19 to 6, and he's trying to pin him. Oh, he's pinning him with his legs. Brutal. Brutal. Time. Hey, you gotta wait till he scores and then it. Two near fall. Two near fall here, 21. No, it's 21 to six. Well, yes. You're right. I know I do math. I know, I was, I was looking, I said, yeah, never mind. So it's 21 to six, they got blood time, so it should be a tech fall with Holden Hahn, 11th grader from LaSalle, beating 11th grader Dylan Hart from CVCA in the 138th division. Tech fall, Holden Hahn, LaSalle. Next up at 144, Eli Marengo, LaSalle, 12th grader, against Aiden Malam, 10th grader at Olentangy Liberty. 
Vassell's going to be in the black and red uniform. Milan Milan is in the red. Owen Tangy Liberty. Owen Tangy Liberty's a sophomore, and the other boy from Lascelles is a senior. Eli Marengo is 12th grader. He's third at the district last year at 132. His record's 7-7. Seven and seven. And he tries to, uh-oh, tried to choke him out. Two red, takedown, he's got the cradle, now he's got the claw in. We have our top four place finishers at 132. Oh, he's gonna lift him, he's gonna belly bump, no! At 132, that would be Jackson He's trying to get him to his back, you better watch out. No, back to him. Wells from St. Charles. Get hand control, Milan needs to get hand control. Back pressure, he's leaning too much forward. Back pressure. Oh, watch that on his neck, coach. No point change. Marengo still riding him. Aiden needs to find a way to get out. He needs to get his knees underneath him and ride. Hips up. Uh-oh, starting to get a turn maybe. Nope. Aiden's got to come up. He needs to turn in with his left arm. Get your left arm through. Oh, belly bump down. And Eli's trying to turn him. Oh, no, no chain. Still two to nothing. Aiden's down. A few seconds to go in this first period. He gets set. He's up to his feet now. He's got to do his turn in, turn in. Come back up, come right back up, young man. That's better. Whoa, he gives him one right at the edge. Two to one. Aiden just turned and faced him. Gave it up with one second to go. Eli Marengo, he takes down. As I said, he's a senior. He's winning two to one. Aiden Milam, 10th grader, and he's got the legs in, but he's kind of small to throw them on a taller guy, but he goes down to the low single. Still hasn't changed him. Now he cuts him loose. Should be three to one now. We got it. Owen Tangy Liberty trying to get tied up and the other boy's starting to walk back to the back of the mat, but then he takes a long shot. Needs to get in closer. Both trying to head control and he gets a shot, but he's kind of far back. Got a wizard series. No takedown yet. They go out of bounds with a minute left in the second period. It's three to one. And we're looking at Red kind of gasping for air, and he's kind of stolen in my book, but I'm not a referee anymore. But pretty been doing it for 40 years. I think I know about refereeing. But he gets in on that leg because he took so long to get back to center, and there's no points yet. And he needs to keep moving. He got to try to get his leg down to the mat and turn into him. Keep fighting it. Keep fighting it. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Turn in. Nope. And they're out of bounds. 39 seconds to go, and it's still three to one. Aiden needs to try to get a takedown. He gets in there and I finish with a double. Come up, 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 up. Two. Oh, we're gonna have to lift. They said he was out of bounds. Said he was out of bounds. We got Fred Feeney checking on the score. Wow. 
What is the ref going to call here? What do we call? Is he going to give him two? Oh! They go back to neutral. That was a close call. I don't know what the ref said in that little discussion group. But Aiden needs to get moving. Oh, he's got to spin around to get two. Two, folks. Wow, he gets it. Oh, he's got to take him back to the mat. Wow. It's 10 seconds. This is tied three to three. Aiden needs to ride, ride, ride. Watch the Granby. They're trying to Granby. Whoa, and it's time. Three to three. Going into the third period, and it should be Aiden's choice. He takes down. Good choice, young man. Aiden takes down. He needs to get out and get hand control here. Let's see what's up here. Eli's on top. I got caution on Eli. His right leg was too far forward. He broke the plane of the man's back feet. He gets reset. Uh-oh, come up, come up, grab the arm, get around. Get your one. Oh, he's going for two. Reversal. Two reversal. The sophomore's beating the senior. Aiden needs to keep riding, try to turn him with a half. Aiden needs to be careful, just don't get turned. You can cut him for one. Always go on your feet. Minute 30 to go. Now he's trying to do a leg in and try to crank the neck. He's got to watch the knees being bent. Time. Potentially dangerous, as Fred Feeney called that. As I said earlier, he was just refereed uh, into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame this past fall. I don't know if that means he's older, if he knows what he's doing. We'll see. Aiden's got to ride him. They're both coming to their feet. The ref's looking how much longer he's going to do. Oh, he cuts him. Five to four. Minute 12 to go. Oh. Milan's got to keep spinning. He's got to keep spinning. High leg. Oh, get the leg locked. That's two. Two. Seven to four. He's going to ride him a little bit. He's going to cut him. He needs to cut him. They could call stalling there. You need to cut him, Aiden. Oh, my. He's still green. You got to keep moving. Still moving. Watch the knees. Wow. They're all tangled up here. Backwards and sideways, and it's a stalemate. Good call, referee. Stalemate. Still green riding. You can always cut him loose, green. Give him one, not two. That's a little coaching point from the sidelines, but no one's listening except Mr. DeSabato. Oh, he throws a boot in, but he better belly bump him. He better take him to the mat. Oh, get up on top of him. There you go. Eli's getting a little tired being rode. Oh, he's got the half in. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, that was close. I thought they were going to call him for stalling because he was just holding on to that crotch and he wasn't trying to cross lift him. He's got a few seconds to go and he's going to win this. Aiden Milan. Aiden's going to win. Aiden from Olatangi Liberty across the river here. Seven to four. Seven to four. Olatangi Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. Officiate. For some, it's a way of staying involved in a sport they grew up with. For others, it's a way to pay it forward by helping kids who play today and tomorrow. It's also a great way to stay active, make extra money, and work with friends. And all of them will say it boils down to one thing, the love of the game. 
Find your reasons and log on to OHSAA.org to find out how to become an official. You'll be glad you did. This is the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Educate through sports. Aiden, get your card, buddy! Get that kiss when the girl gives you your trophy, buddy! Aiden takes first. He's going to kiss the girl when he gives her the singlet. Now we got Aiden Rush, senior from Columbus Nacelles. DJ Loveless, 11th grader from LaSalle. Rush is in on him. He's in the black uniform with the purple pride. And LaSalle's in the red and white uniform. Aiden Rush was fifth in the state last year at 144. Third in the district at 144. Oh, Rush gets another takedown. Rush trying to bar him up. He needs to come out to the side and run that. Keep that arm tight. He's running it. Whoa, he's got him tight. Whoa! Four in the first period for senior night. Adam Rush promised to sell. That's a nice senior night for Adam Rush. Fall. Next at 157, Cooper Rathburn, 12th grader from Hartley against Joel Welch, 9th grader Columbus DeSales. Cooper Rathburn, he was third in the state at 138, second in the district at 138 last year. His father's last year of uh, coaching, he'd been, re been coaching for 30 some years in the central district. He's wrestling Joel Welch, who's rated sixth in the state, and Cooper Rathburn's rated fifth in the state, so this should be a decent match. I watched uh, Joel Welch wrestle against uh, Dublin Kaufman as a freshman. He did pretty well the other day. Let's see what he can do against this senior from Bishop Hartley. No, no takedown. Rathburn's in the blue uniform with the red stripes with the red ankle band. And Welch is in the purple uniform with the green ankle band. No score as we head midway through the first period. Oh, he gets a knee pick. He's going for, no, no back points. Knee pick, 2-0. And he's trying to ride that arm real tight. Got the hips in tight, got a claw on him. And he kicks him loose. No, no. No takedown. They're out of bounds, both feet. Cooper needs to watch when he kicks him and, and not walk straight into him. Uh-oh. Got the underhook, Cooper. Get your head to the other side, Cooper. Oh, he's got that low leg, but no takedown. The wizard. Oh, well, ankle picks him. Watch the knee. The table. Potentially dangerous uh, on the left knee of uh, Welch. Isaac Robinson, St. Charles. Dylan Hart, CBCA. And Holder Hoon from the South. Whoa. Cooper's got the underhook, both of them, but he doesn't really know what he's doing with that head. He's got to get that head out to do anything with that underhook. Welch is coming forward. No takedown yet. Keep working. Keep working. Break, break, break. No takedown. You're supposed to stop him, ref. I'm doing the officiating, the commentary. The best looking guy in the gym. I can't do it all, folks. I'm telling you what. God love you guys. Giving money to the church. Come on now. Cooper Rathburn still trying to fight. He's trying to push him. He's trying to push him on the edge. 
Welch needs to circle in. He tries a high crotch. He better get his base. Get your base. Time. No takedown, folks. Score is two to nothing. We have a top four place finishers at 144 pounds. Oh, I did make a mistake. It's two to one. My bad. Cooper uh, Rathburn takes down as the sales takes up. Two to one at the end of the first period. Joel Welch. Trying to ride him. He's got that bar pretty tight. He needs to come outside and work it. He needs to try to get those arms pinned back. Trying to get that. Oh. I'd say keep going to the other side. Get that boot in. Better get a boot in. Do something with those legs. Use your legs to turn them. Hey, uh, can you warm up that, that way, please, so I can see? Thank you. Sales is still trying to ride him. The ninth grader against the 12th grader. But look, that freshman's hanging in there. He's still trying to figure out how to turn him. Welch is trying to get out there, but... Oh, now he's going to try to go the other way with that leg. Go cross body. Run that, run that. Wow, stalling on green. Said he was staying on one side of the hip and not going to the other side. It's kind of hard to turn him in that kind of uh, arm bar. That was a good call by the ref, but I think he waited 30 seconds too long. See what happens if Cooper can get out now. He's stretching his legs out. Whoa. Go forward, you better get your hips up, Cooper. Cooper's up to his feet, now he's gotta get out. Joel's gotta lift him, belly bump him down to the mat. Lift him down to the mat. Got to be stalling on somebody. No. Cooper's trying to get out. Time. No change. Two to one going into the third period. Joel takes down the freshman against the senior. See if the freshman can get up to his feet, get hand control. Well, he let, it, he let the boots go in. That's going to be hard to get out of that. That's a long way off there, but Cooper's winning two to one. As I said, he's a senior from Hartley. Third in the state last year. He's trying to raise his value coming into the senior year. Oh, he gets the reversal, folks. Got to throw the boot in. Cooper's got to get out. Wow, he reversed him right away, folks. Stalemate, and as it come to neutral, and uh, one man, two seconds to go, and uh, DeSales is up by one. Three to two, see if he can ride him out. One minute and two seconds to go. Rathburn on the bottom, trying to get out. Senior. Against Joel Welch from Columbus, DeSales, freshman. Cooper's to his feet, he needs to turn in. Needs to turn in. How long are they gonna let him stay to his feet without turning him? Warning green, one red, second pit, penalty point. Oh, and he goes back into the two. Two, and they clear the mat. 
Welsh lets him take him down at the edge there. Five to three with 35 seconds. Welsh needs to calm down. You still get your escape and then you get up and get a takedown. You win. Turn in. There's your one. It's five to four. 29 seconds. Oh! Oh, he's got to get the bird. That's two. That's a Merkel. That's two. The sales is winning by a point. He's trying to choke him out. He needs to stay right there. Stay right there for 14 seconds. Oh, they call stalemate. 12 seconds to go, folks. 12 seconds to go. Wow, what a match we got here. We got a freshman winning by one point over Hartley. The sales. Oh, caution green. You need to step back. Caution green. Uh-oh, we got a discussion. All right, now we're back. We got Rathburn on the bottom. His dad just came over to the table to try to give him a little breathing air. 12 seconds to go. Here we go. Let's see what Welsh can do. Welch belly bumps him forward. He needs to push forward hard. Five, four, three, two, one. Time! Oh, they were up. They had the belly bump. That could have been called for story. But he gives the freshman a reprieve as DeSales wins by one point. Wow, that would be interesting to watch. The CCL finals. They'll be back in the finals, folks. I believe that was five to four, but Cliff's going to have to check that out because I'm not sure on that one. None. Next match, 165. Zach Lopez, 12th grader, to sells against Jack Willing, 12th grader from LaSalle. Lopez was fifth at 150 last year in the state, first at 150, and then Jack Whelan, Whelan was second at 157 in the district from LaSalle. LaSalle's in the white and red, LaSalle's in the purple and white, and he's in the green anklet with the white headgear, and then LaSalle's with red anklet with the big knobby white knee pad. Oh, he smacks the head down. Lopez got to get his head out. He's getting. We also need DJ Loveless from the South at Table for Award. Lopez is fighting the wrist control, but he's letting uh, Jack Willem get his head too much. He needs to control his head, not. The other boy said. Oh, 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 he's got the two. Take down LaSalle. Uh-oh, Lopez is coming up, but he didn't turn in. He needed to turn in. He was just coming up. Lopez got to keep moving, and this is senior night. He's got to win on senior night. Whoa! Puts him back, back down. Time! Into the first period, 2-0, LaSalle. Were you yelling at me? I wasn't. I was yelling at Joel. <laughs> okay, start the second period. Wondering if you read Bill Cosby's yes, I did. Thank you. We're on TV right now, so now we got to edit it. But thank you. Okay, DeSales is up. Let's see if Lopez can drive him. Oh, he tries to throw the boot in, but he's got an overhook. 
He's got that arm over, see if he can zone out of that. No, he goes back to the mat. Lopez is trying to stretch him out, elongating, but he's awful tall for Lopez to get there. Now he tries to underhook, tried to underhook the knee and ride him, but that didn't help. They rolled out of bounds, folks. Lopez got to pick up the pace here a little bit. There's a lot of ankles showing on that one. See what he does on this first move. No, he tries to push forward, a half spiral. Uh-oh, he better watch his hips, potentially dangerous, whoa. As I said, Zach Lopez, uh, he's kind of small to be doing that stuff with a longer leg uh, wrestler. I would try to be way out to the side doing a claw or something. Now he grabs the ankle, but he's, he didn't do, he didn't pull him forward. Didn't do enough uh, energy flow to push him forward. So Jack is out and it's up by a point, two points now. Lopez needs to get a takedown. You have to see Lopez get a good shot yet. Uh oh, Lopez got an underhook. Whoa, come on, Lopez. You need to work off that mat, get off your two hands. Lopez is just trying to hold on to the arms. I don't see him trying to get a takedown. 3-0, so if I'm losing by three points, I would think I'd be trying to get a shot, but I'm not Coach Palmer, but if I was in Palmer's seat, I'd be fit to be tied. They go out of bounds. Neutral. Seven seconds. Time. Green takes down to start the third period. He's losing three to nothing. Two minutes to go. Two minutes to go, folks. Make his senior night. He needs to get three points, folks. Lopez is down. He gets popped up. He's got to come up. He's got to come back up, young man. Three to nothing. Keep moving. Keep moving. Fred's messing with you, dude. Fred Feeney just put one of the referee's flip disc on my table. Oh, he rolls out of bounds, Zach Lopez. Still down 3-0, he needs to get out. See what he does on this first move, if he's getting his hand control. I noticed I did the DeSales Kaufman match not too long ago, and a lot of them wasn't getting out. Almost were getting rid like they had an Indian horse blanket on him. There you go, stand up! Nope, he's trying to switch. Oh, you gotta keep rolling. You gotta keep trying to get up, get up to your base. Get back up to your base, folks. Get your knees up underneath and get a base. Now stand up. Turn in. Turn in. He's got the arm bar and he was trying to get a half, but now he's on that side. I don't know why he's not trying to throw the half. 
Uh-oh, he's on that far side, but he, he needs to jump side, I think. 215-pound match that was on mat three, down here to mat one. The 215-pound match that was on mat three will be moving to mat one. Wow, LaSalle Sr. beats Zach Lopez. And that was three to nothing, I believe, but I don't remember. Yes, three to zero. Thank you. Three zero. Three to zero. Lopez got zero. Willem got three. Next, 175. Carson Thomas, LaSalle, 11th grader against Andy Bradford, 11th grader, Columbus LaSalle. Okay, Carson Thomas is rated number one in the state. Andrew Bradford is rated fourth. The cell was first in Brexfield. He was second at 165 last year and first in the district at 165. Andrew Barford, fifth at the state at 165 and first in the district at 165. As I said, he's rated fourth, but he just got taken down by Carson Thomas. They're both 11th graders, so they show promise for the next couple years. Just let him loose. Barford's trying to work. Top four place finishes at 157. Ian Wizard, Montana Liberty, Jesse Farrell, Hamilton Township, Cooper Rathburn, Harvey, and Joel Welch. Oh, he's trying to throw him. He's got to get around him. No points. No points yet. He's got to get around. He's got to get around. There's two. He secured that knee, two, and Red kicked him loose. They're both neutral. 42 seconds to go, it's a four to two score, and he tries an ankle pick, and he turns in, but no points. We're looking for fleeing the mat, maybe, or walking off the mat, but I don't believe so. He turned back in. So let's see what happens here. Balford tried to, He's got that arm to do a dump, but he's not trying to dump. And we got two right there. Carson Thomas is getting a few takedowns now. Uh oh, he's going to pull that arm in. Time! The sales choice to start the second period, six to two. Red calls neutral since he's already taken him down three times. I think that's a good coaching strategy. Oh, Bar from trying to. Oh, another takedown. Carson Thomas. Thomas kicks him loose. He's trying to get a double double. He's out of bounds, though. He comes back in bounds. Kind of hard to work on that edge, folks. He walks him out of bounds. Warning Green walks backwards out of bounds. That was a good, good legitimate Jack call. Green you got to stay in that little center. Uh, 165 pound champion that I take your award. Uh oh, he gets another takedown, folks. He's going to try to cut him. Uh oh, he's got another takedown, folks. It's 12 to 4. He's trying to do a clinic on him. Takedowns. He's going to cut him loose. He didn't cut him yet. Now he cuts him. And they go out of bounds. 57 seconds in the second period. It's 12 to 5. And Carson's looking for another takedown. He gets head control. He pops that head and then he drops down to low single. Limp arms. He hadn't finished yet. Barford's still fighting. His, oh, and he gives that wizard away. 
in that position, you need to try to stay in that wizard so you can keep your opponent from getting all the way to two. But Barford couldn't hold it. I think this other fellow is a little bit stronger than Barford. Fourteen to five with twenty-five seconds to go in the second period. Trying to turn him. Uh oh, he's trying to run it, he's trying to run it, he's out to the side. I don't think he's going, oh, wait a minute, he might get it. No back points, he had no chance to get in back points that time. Carson Thomas is definitely in control. Green takes top to start the third period. Both both kids are uh, rated high in the state, and they're both 11th graders. So this is pretty pretty good match. But Barford's trying to ride his ankle. Carson needs to come out, but watch the knee. You got to watch the knee, folks. He's got the ankle really hard. No stalemate. Carson needs to get out. 15 to 5. 130 to go in the third period. Barford tries to get a nice outside double. Now he needs to try to high leg. He needs to high leg and get off of that uh, knee position because all you do on your knees is praying and something else, and I'm not allowed to say it. This is a friendly TV. But oh, my Uncle Bob would be laughing right now. He's rolling over in his grave. Whoa, he's got the cradle in tight. Two for takedown. Oh, boy. No back points yet. Kind of hard to get in that position. 50 seconds to go. It's 17 to 5. 17 to 5. 40 seconds. Barford's trying to get out. He's trying to get out of that hand control. Time, 17 to 5. 17 to 5. Next, 190s from DeSales, Lincoln Shaloff against uh, Colin Woodgriff, 10th grader from LaSalle. Shuloff was. Uh, Second in the state at 175, six at Brad Brexville, first at 175 last year in the district. And it's Colin uh, Woodruff, Woodruff, was second, sixth in the state at 150, so he moved up a couple weight classes. He was second at Brexville. The sales is in the Traditional purple and white. And LaSalle is in the uh, gray and red. They have several different colors of uniforms, it looks like. So Carter Coon on the Liberty. in the red ankle, and LaSalle's shoot off is uh, in the green ankle. Lincoln's 11th grader, and Woodridge is 10th grader. Lincoln's second in the state, and, and Colin is 
seventh in the state in state road. Oh, they're going after it here. Shoot and reshoot, that's good movement. No takedown yet. They're both filling out each other, but Shulos trying to drag, tried to shuck him by. He needs to work the head more, I think. Oh, whoa, he got that double, but Shulos trying to... No, Lincoln gives up the two. He's got to get his knees up and get get out. He's got to find the hand control, Lincoln. Keep finding hand control. Knee up, knee slide. As LaSalle's just riding deep into the night. Uh-oh. Whoa, he's almost out. Oh. I'm looking at stalling on that ankle, folks. Five second rule. Green takes down after he was just ridden out a little bit that first period. So let's see if Lincoln can change the tables here. Two to nothing. Lincoln was ridden for the last 30 some seconds. See if he can get out quicker this time. He has hand control. He needs to turn in. Don't worry about two. Get your one. And then he said the same thing. Coach Palmer said the same thing. Get your one. And you got to, up. Oh, there's your one. Two to one, start the second period. Lincoln needs to change uh, levels here. Uh, we have 190 pounder Dwayne Davis from Centennial to the head table here, Ward, please. Oh, he's in there, he's gotta finish, he's gotta come up. Tripod up, he needs tripod up. And I'm telling you what, LaSalle's got a wizard hard there. He's got a wizard hard to get out of that. He's in there, but Lincoln's not a treetop. He's got to try to finish. He trips forward, but nothing yet. Oh, he's going for a cradle. Oh, there's your two. Both wrestlers were fighting hard to hold it. One had the wizard in really hard, and the other one was trying to go with the ankle. So it's three to two, and Lincoln's riding with the power half and the leg, and see if he can change it. Elongate him a little bit longer, and then work on the neck. Oh, he's trying to run it. Lincoln's trying to run it. He's trying to run it. No points yet. He's trying to run that half and run that arm bar. He's got to hip into him more. Oh, he jumps high. Oh, he lets him out with a few seconds to go. Whoa, that was a mental mistake there. He let him out with about two seconds to go, folks. That's a hard way to give a point away that close to the end of the period. Tied three to three. You need to reset the scoreboard. One red escape, and they're both on their neutral. Lincoln cut him loose. Lincoln needs to work on the takedowns, work the head more. And the boy from LaSalle needs to just keep moving. Let's see what they can do. They got three minutes. Lincoln tries to run him. Watch the knee. Good call. Up easy. Here we go. Lincoln's walking in too much. When he gets uh, set there, he needs to be a little more alerted to his ankle. The LaSalle team, they, they like to ride on their hands and knees there and they get that low shot. But he should have maybe taken that shot as the coach said the single was there. Let's see what happens here. Lincoln needs to try to stay lower in the base. That's it, now get off your knees and start to shake him out. The cell just keeps coming in. He gets that low single. See if he can finish. Oh, no takedown, folks. Oh, 
Take down a witness match, I believe. Let's see. Four to three. Oh, Red gets a shot. Lincoln's trying to get his head. He needs to spin around. He needs to get the cradle, get the head in the side. Now keep running it. Two, he had the cradle locked up. See if he can run it some more. Get the head in his rib cage. That's it. Now keep the chin. Arch, 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 arch. Count him, count him, folks. Oh, count him. Stay right there. Stay right there. Get up off your name. Woo! Oh, we got back points, and we got reversal for LaSalle. LaSalle's going to cut him, and he shoots in by the table. Watch the table. Lincoln's winning 9-6. to six. They're going over the score, but I believe I had the right score. Cliff, I have to go back into editing to find out what I had at the end of the second period. Nine to six, Green is in favor and they're both neutral. Whoa, whoa, you better get, get around him. No, they're fighting folks. It's a dog fight, he needs to keep him down and get an ankle. When he pops up, get an ankle. Get an ankle. Oh, there's two. Oh, he's trying for back points. Lincoln wins 11 to 6. 11 to 6. Lincoln Shulov. Columbus DeSalle's 11th grader. And that was a good match for boys who are tired. They're both tired. Here we go, the next match, 215, Max Shuloff, 12th grader, Columbus DeSales against Carm Harden, LaSalle's 12th grader. Let's see here. We know Max was a senior or junior last year, and he was first at 215, first at 215 in the district. Yes, he's a state champ last year, and then uh, he's rated first, and Carm Harden is rated 11th. He was fourth at 175 in the district last year. So he moved up from 175 to 215. Shuloff gets in on him. Two. Max trying to crank those legs. He's trying to lift the head. Max trying to stretch him out a little bit more. Oh, that hurts on those legs. I'm not flexible enough to do all that. Yes, as I said, Max was first, second, and fourth in the state. And he went undefeated last year, 50-some matches in a row. Oh, he's got that deep half in there. Uh-oh. That hurts me from this part of the view. Three near fall for Max Shuloff. I hope, hope my cameraman over there is zeroing in on that half. That looked kind of wicked. Neutral. Oh, nice duck under to a little high crotch. Yes, I need to see that again. That's a big guy doing a uh, little guy move. He hit that duck under to a high crotch and, and finished. Seven to one with 20 seconds to go in the period. <laughs> My bopper was like, oh, what do you mean? 15 minutes. <laughs> that bopper, we should have told him it was time to go out there. We would have tricked him. He would have been embarrassed. Time! LaSalle's choice, second period. LaSalle's takes down, seven to one, he needs to get out or stay off his back, one or the other, folks. 
I don't know if I take down on a state champion returning. But you never know, you could get a roll through or something. Shulov puts the legs in, now oh, he's cranking that. Watch the elbow, watch the shoulder. That hurts from over here, this far over the stadium. I wonder if we got that on there. Oh, that hurts my shoulder, folks. I'm 65 and that hurts me from the sideline. But my camera guy's in his 80s, so you know that hurt. There's some more points. Wow, he's cranking him on the shoulders now. Three near fall, 13 to one. Minute to go, see if he can tech fall him. He needs to get a three here. Three here and roll him out and get, get in the showers for senior night. There's your three if he if we get if he rolls back to his belly. Oh he gets a fall with 45 seconds to go left in the second period. Max Shulov fall for senior night. Here we go to two. On the what this one? Okay, at heavyweight we have Jackson Mill, L-A-S-A, -A, 11th grader, and we got David Grimes, 11th grader, from CVCA. CVCA is in the black and blue, and LaSalle's in the red psychedelic. We're going back to the psychedelic era here. Whoa, two for CBC and they go out of bounds. I'm trying to look up some specs here on these boys. Well, I have no information on these boys' record. But CBC is in charge of this riding. David Grimes, oh, I do have a weight on David Grimes. He was five and five this year. And that's what I got so much because William Cole was uh, from LaSalle. That was his heavyweight, but they brought someone else from LaSalle, this Jackson Mills. So. And he's got to get up. They already called warning on red. Warning red, and then he gets out. He gets a one. Oh, he's going to try to headlock him, but that's not going to work. Only in middle school. Only in middle school. Or when you're drunk and just say it orderly, you get a headlock. But we're here at a Christian school. There's no one drinking in the school here except for the priest. But we won't say anything about the priest because you know how that goes. You will? You got some stories to tell about the priest? Minor manners, that's it. Oh, I don't know if she was talking to the TV or what. Oh, my Lord, help me, dear. Nope, time, four to one, and we're going to the second period. And Red takes down, he needs to get out anyway. He's, he's won uh, one point, he needs more. Red's trying to get out, but he might get cradled. He better come up, head off the mat, get your head up. Head up, guys, you're in the way of the focus for TV. Thank you, thank you. You're good, you're good. Oh, he gets out, Red is out, uh-oh. Oh, two, CVCA. And they go out of bounds. David Grimes putting it to him right now. David Grimes is putting it to him. I didn't hear your name called. 
They all want to sign autographs today, and I'm not signing. Oh, I mean getting signed. Come on, come on, get off the mat. That's what we're telling them right now. Get off the mat, Red. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh! Final pin. Lassell takes it in the chin. David Grimes, CVC, fall. Of all the right, Matt State Radio, TV, you, sir. Hilda Sabato with Matt side as we winding up this tournament for Mark Zimmer's third annual memorial tournament. At first place, LaSalle had 337 points. Again, we have a cell and phone that was just found on the middle Mark of the map. Uh, Alma Mater was second with 248. Third place was Olentangy Liberty with 204, 208, excuse me. Fourth place, CVCA with 167. And we have another Central Catholic team, Bishop Hartley with 136. As I said earlier, this was all for Mark Zimmer, the memorial from the death that he passed away uh, three years ago. And as I said, there's a fundraiser and all this money that they raise for Mark's name gets kicked back to the DeSales wrestling team. So I hope they made some money on this tournament and it kicks back to give scholarships to well-earned uh, students. And this is out with Phil DeSabato with Matt Sykes. The Cubs won the World Series and the Ford Model R hit the assembly line. While here in Ohio, school administrators came together to form the Ohio High School Athletic Association. One thing that hasn't changed since 1907 is the dedication of the OHSAA to education-based athletics in Ohio. School sports teach responsibility, sportsmanship, and life lessons that stay with students long after their playing days are over. The OHSAA seeks to prepare students not for the next level of sport, but for the next level of life. 